All right, here we go. J160 2200, AKA chicken wings. Bit of a project we've been working on, putting the plane back together for a customer who bought it uh, cheap on Facebook Marketplace, believe it or not. Anyway, the engine's been out and uh, been overhauled and uh, top end done as well. Accessory section removed, everything done back there. And liquid cooled heads installed. All the usual stuff, top end, cylinders, pistons, rings, valve job, all that. Um, we've got our common rail and the uh, water pump, Bosch water pump mounted. And yeah, we've got our radiator in position, ready to go in the cow, which is right there. Um, everything is pretty much hooked up. Got our E ignition. There's the hall sensor there. See it there? And the uh, ignition module there, just behind that hose. There she is. Header tank, of course. Wa oil cooler down there. That's the uh, water cooled oil cooler heat exchange. Anyway, tidying it all up, getting it together. But um, one of the things I this engine had. Uh, four CHTs on it. Now that's completely overkill. We wouldn't normally bother with that. But because it had it installed, and I figured, well, we'll get them going. So some of the thermocouples were crook. In fact, I've replaced all of them so I can sort of calibrate, or well, sort of get them more accurate because they're all over the shop. Now what I've got here is a kettle, and I'm boiling water. And um, there's three probes in there because I I'll explain why in a minute. So are the three probes that I replaced on his um, three of the CHT gauges. Now, if we go into the cockpit here, you can see I'll flick the master on. And you can see there's his very bright and colourful um, cylinder temp. So the three that are in the boiling water right now um, are measuring 97, 100 and 101. So very accurate, only a few degrees off boiling. And in fact, what I've written here is 98, 102 and 103. They were the numbers that I got before when it was boiling. Looks like this one might have changed a bit. Maybe they're not perfectly consistent. But anyway, they're pretty accurate as you can see, only a few degrees off. Now the VDO one here, the red one, the reason that's different is because his gauge crapped out. And you can see my well organised bench here. Trust me, I know where everything is. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> anyway, there's his gauge. So that unfortunately, uh, it lights up but it doesn't read a thermocouple. I tried and tried, it's not the thermocouple, it just doesn't read. So that had to go. So I've put a VDO one in, which is pretty similar, although it's red. That'll be all right. Um, so yeah, there's my gauges there. The water's obviously cooling down now. I'll boil it up again. Now, of course, water boils at sea level at 100 degrees Celsius. That's a very good way of calibrating your gauges. In this installation, the customer, or well, the previous builder, had put four CHT gauges in there, which is pretty good actually. I, I thought, well, he's put that effort in, I might as well get them all going. So that one's my one, I replaced it with a VDO one. Unfortunately, it's red, but yeah, it's the same same sort of thing. Um, and there you go. So that's actually measuring, that'll be measuring under the spark plugs, except for one of them, the VDO one doesn't. It has a different thermocouple. And so for that one, I've mounted it there. This is a different thermocouple. Pretty close to the spark plug, so I think that's good enough to give us a, an indication of what the, the material's doing. And of course, we've got our temperature sender down here on our common rail. That'll be measuring the, uh, the actual coolant temperature. And these are measuring the temperature of the actual head. Normally the head temperature, the CHT, is uh, up to 10 degrees hotter than the coolant temperature. They're, they're very relative. So I figured by having um, four calibrated or reasonably accurately calibrated thermocouples uh, and gauges, uh, we'll be able to make a direct comparison later on. Uh, this one here, 
uh, was right on 100C. Trust me, um, I haven't got this one dunked in the boiling water. This one seemed to be boiling at 98. This one was boiling at 102 degrees Celsius. And this one, the boiling water was measuring 103 degrees Celsius. It's cooling down now, as you can see, it's not boiling. We'll just flick the kettle again. And we'll get it boiling. And they'll come up. This one normally hits 109, sorry, 98. This one typically, oh, there you go, 102. And this one normally 103. So a degree or two variation, but pretty accurate. And this one right on 100. And uh, you can see she's boiling all right. And there's the the three thermocouples that'll go under the spark plug. So there you go. Now I'll carefully file those out so they fit the spark plug, spark plug perfectly, uh, as opposed to this nonsense. That shit house. Now they weren't working anyway. Rotec have these in stock. We get them specially made. So, K-type thermocouple for CHT, Rotec item. Anyway, we'll get this uh, buttoned up and when we run the engine, we'll be able to compare all the cylinder heads and uh, I already know from experience that when we run it, they're all gonna run at around about maybe 100, 110. And the temperature, the coolant temperature should be about 80, between 70 and 80. So anyway, we'll keep those numbers in mind for when we fire up the engine in the next few days. Yeah, so I was talking earlier about the, the thermocouples. This is a Rotec one, brand new. And um, this is a CHT thermocouple. And this is the one it's replacing, which is looking a bit tired and sad for itself. And the biggest problem with this sort of thermocouple here, you can see when you put the spark plug in it, you know, it's, it's hopeless, it's loose as anything. And the problem with that is, that's gonna cause gas leaks. See that? And when you get gas leaks there, it gives you a false reading. So you don't want that. That's no good at all. So that one's out. And this is the one that we're replacing it with. You see the spark plug there? It's a perfect fit. And that's going to work much better. Now we use iridium spark plugs with a 5 8 hex. NGKs. We use these on our radials as well. Yeah, that's going to work perfectly. And if we look at it on the engine, you can see how neat they are. There it is under the spark plug right there. And there. So they're going to work well.